guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new and you've just stumbled across my channel hello welcome i'm mand so it has been quite a while since i've uploaded and especially a paranormal video but i am back today with one of the creepiest stories i think i've ever recorded or researched i should say ever when i was looking up about this you probably see from the title what this is about but when i was researching this i got goosebumps like genuine goosebumps like researching this place but i was fascinated i spent i think two or three days researching this this is absolutely phenomenal so the story i'm gonna tell you about is a haunted cottage up in kunin on the border of Fermanagh and Tyrone, which is in north of Ireland, Northern Ireland, I should say. And oh my gosh, the history of this place is just unreal. But it has laid abandoned since the family left in 1913, 1914. I'm not really sure because some of the different articles that I've read as I was gathering my information and I've watched some videos as well kind of one says one thing and another says another thing but i will share all that i found here in this video and you guys can decide for yourself and form your own opinions on what you think is the story with this cottage so grab some snacks grab a drink let's get into it so i just want to pop in a little bit of information about how the cottage was rediscovered and it was rediscovered when the northern ireland forest service were chopping down the trees in the forest that was surrounding it and they came across the cottage and they wanted to find somebody that would want to invest in this and redo it up and kind of make it a tourist destination because of the history that surrounds this place but a local ghost expert actually warned them not to because the increased amount of visitors would heighten the energy and I will get into the story and you will understand why he warned them not to do this. This cottage is famous for its poltergeist activity which terrorised a family of eight. So it was Bridget Murphy who was a widow and her seven children back in 1911. Now it is believed that this house is the only house in Ireland that an exorcism was performed on the house. That's what I could find from my research. Bridget Murphy lived in this cottage with her seven kids, her son James and her six daughters, who were Annie, Mary, Teresa, Catherine, Bridget and Jane. Now, all this kind of happened in the autumn of 1914, when one gloomy, cold and wet evening, Bridget and her daughter Annie were sitting by the fireplace when they could hear footsteps in the empty loft of the cottage and they could hear loud tapping on the walls. And then the three youngest girls were in the room adjacent to them when they started screaming. The following days, the cottage was infested with poltergeist activity. Two priests offered to help the Murphy family and they were Father Peter Smith and Father Eugene Coyle. And the events that they witnessed was absolutely shocking and they just could not explain it. Like on one occasion, they laid a sheet on an empty bed where the girls used to sleep. And this human form appeared under the sheet and as it was appearing, it then like transformed into a animal shape and then just collapsed. And they couldn't find any reason why this happened. So one of the priests decided to sit on the bed and what he described it was like snakes were slithering under the sheet underneath him. And from one of the dark areas of the room, they could hear snoring and hissing and spitting. If that's not terrifying enough they decided to put the kids on the bed to see what would happen and they could hear the sounds of like horses kicking and then all of a sudden the bed sheets just flew off the bed and across the room one of the priests decided to put his hand on the bed and challenge the poltergeist which 
I would not recommend but anyway and he described the feeling like a rat running underneath the sheet and the shocking sensation of an eel wrapping around his wrist Ooh. and he said that it didn't go any further because it didn't want to touch his consecrated hand Bridget Murphy did state to one of the priests that she believed it was her daughter Annie who the attention or the poltergeist attention was focused on and that these manifestations were more centered around her daughter. So the priest carried out some tests with Bridget Murphy and her daughter Annie lying on the bed separately. So they tested out Annie first so they got her to lay down on the bed and when they did they said they could hear rushing coming from the ceiling down the wall and into the bed. Ooh. And when they got Bridget Murphy to lie down in the bed, nothing happened. There was no sound of a rushing coming down the wall or the ceiling or anything like that. Some articles state there was two exorcisms done in the house and others say there was actually no exorcism done in the house. So I'm not really sure what the story is, but a lot of people say there was an exorcism done on the house the time the Murphys were living there because the priests were trying to help them. And unfortunately, these priests did have misfortune come upon them after investigating this house. One suffered a nervous breakdown and another got spinal meningitis. So that's whether it's linked to the house or not, I'm not sure, but it seems to be a big coincidence that it happened after they investigated the house. But it is said that the Murphys did emigrate to America. They got a boat from Scotland and they emigrated to America in 1914. Now, some of the dates don't add up, so if you are looking it up, you know, some dates will say 1913. Some will say 1914. I'm not 100% sure, but they did emigrate to America. You can, I think you can find that in the census. But allegedly, the poltergeist activity followed them to America. It actually caused some havoc on the boat as they were sailing over. But apparently, it didn't stay long and it actually came back to the house. So it's believed that this poltergeist activity is more focused on the house than the actual people. So I do wanna share some more of the activity that I may not have mentioned in that story that I did state before, but plates would move across the table by themselves. They couldn't explain it and they might be thrown at the wall. Pots and pans were thrown at the wall. Apparently the bed that the children slept in would elevate off the floor. I think I remember watching one of the videos that said one of the daughters was putting something into her chest of drawers and the drawer slammed on her finger. So that is terrifying in itself. You know, there was footsteps in the loft and they could hear tapping on the walls. It would even tap along to the soldiers song. So it would tap along to the music. I mean, it absolutely terrorized this family and it really did become the talk of the neighborhood. And the neighbors weren't really inclined to help of course you know ireland we can be quite superstitious but there was a story that i came across that became a rumor around that neighborhood at the time that bridget murphy's son had found a book in the forest and i can't remember what the name of the book was but I'm sure if you look it up, you can find it. But it was all to do about demons and summoning demons and just kind of like dark magic stuff. You know, they were accusing the family of practicing witchcraft or, you know, doing rituals. That was an accusation made against the family. And apparently the son got involved in this and got really obsessed with this book and they believe that he may have summoned a demon and that's why that poltergeist activity happened to the house that the son was so obsessed with this book that he found and he summoned the demon. Now, before they moved to America, the priest did take this book off him and apparently locked it in the church and to this day, I believe it is still locked away in that church. There is one more little thing that I do want to add to the story before I end this video is that a man did live in this cottage before the Murphy family lived in it and apparently he was murdered and so they believe that it is him that was 
terrorizing the family and that is the entity that surrounds this cottage. So guys, that is the end of the story. Trust me when I say when I was researching this and I was watching the videos, I've seen some people do ghost hunts. I'll link it all below, but oh my God, I got such goosebumps. I can't even begin to describe, but I really enjoyed researching it. So what do you guys think? Do you think it was poltergeist activity? Do you think the sun summoned a demon and that's what surrounds the house? Do you think possibly that the house was built on a burial ground and that it disturbed the spirits there? I mean, anything is possible. It is paranormal after all. So comment below what you think. Do you think it's all hogswash and there's no such thing as ghosts or demons? Or do you think that this place is truly haunted? I'll let you decide for yourself. So with that being said, I hope you did enjoy the video. Maybe got some goosebumps like I did. I'll link some of the articles and videos that I watched down below so you yourself can look into it even more. But I just want to give you a run rundown on the history of this place. It absolutely fascinated me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you like this video, please do give it a huge thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, share it with somebody who you think might be interested. Subscribe if you haven't already and become a part of the family. Because why not? This is for all the weird and wonderfuls out there. <laughs> and as always, oh yes, don't forget to hit the bell. So you'll be notified when I've uploaded because currently at this moment it seems to be quite infrequent. But do hit the bell. At least you'll be notified when my videos have gone up. As always, I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm.